the guys welcome back to Scott Speed Shop Jed here as always and dad and today's video it's it's a conundrum because in the last update I said I don't need another car I don't need a race car because we we're talking about the pro stock everybody saying that engine needs to be in a car and if you don't know the pro stock Hemi right there right there well dad and I made a save seven hour round trip to Omaha Nebraska and we bought a thing yeah we did that Well, you all might be asking, well, what is Jed doing at a Sinclair station? With Dad, with the car trailer, and the pickup, and we're just a stone's throw away from Nebraska. Well, you're gonna find your answer here in a little bit. I may have uh, made a silly decision, but a silly decision was necessary because Every man needs something that they absolutely don't need in any respect. So, I'm gonna stay tuned for it. Well, as always, the man, the myth, the legend, and Old Dollar have delivered us to La Vista, Nebraska to pick up that thing. Ah, uh, that's a dream car of mine. But this one, it's a little different. It's unlike anything I've ever bought before, so. Let's go take a look at it. What the world says you did. This is too bad. It's just like buying a boat. There's two good days. <laughs> the day you buy it, the day you sell it. <laughs> yeah, we got a uh, we got ourselves some uh, really nice lightweight doors here. That's perfect. We appear to be missing uh, something in the front. Well, a couple of somethings. I'll tell you, you know, you got to look past the crap. We got a later model K member. Look at the tire. Now look at these tires, yeah. We got a, uh, I mean, we're going to do some extra bracing up here in the front, but I mean, this car is actually incredibly solid for what it is. When we get home, we'll show you some more on it, but old school subframe connectors. Look at the cage work. There's probably nothing particularly great about the cage, but it's in there and it's solid. I mean, look at the floors. Freaking amazing. We're now leaving Nebraska to head back to Kansas. What do you got to say about the blue pile behind us? Well, I hope it's still there when we get home. <laughs> if there's enough of it left, you mean? Oh, it's so light. It could just fly off that trailer any moment. <laughs> yeah, well. But uh, we got a good deal on it. It was one of those things I really didn't need this thing, but God dang it, I just couldn't live without it. I wonder which way I'd pull the tire. Uh, I don't know. I'm not navigating, so I'd say go that way. That way it looks pretty good, except for this little van here. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. I actually watched this car on Marketplace for like the course of a month or so. It was first for sale for 800 bucks, then it sold. I was like, okay, I didn't need it, it sold. And then it popped up again for like 2,500 and we ended up settling down. And uh, we settled really nicely. We're both happy. And uh, there you go. And uh, yeah, no, I got it. Back to Kansas. Oh, I gotta navigate for dad so we get the hell out of here, get on the highway. Okay guys, I gotta capture this. Just, we're still partially at the moment. Dad's had this magical knack of naming just about every car we've ever had, except for the yard dart. And I just asked him a few moments ago, what are we going to call this old pile of crap in the back? And what would you say? I said, Barely Cuda. The Barely Cuda. Now tell me that just ain't comical. <laughs> and Dad was just talking about painting like a half-naked fish, half-naked woman with their boobs hanging out on the side of the car. <laughs> oh, that'd be priceless. <laughs> oh, the barely cuda. Well, like a mermaid, like a like a really ugly mermaid, like from the a mermaid from the trailer park. Yeah, but she's got to have boobs. They're gonna be well. They're just gonna be hanging. Okay. It's you know because stuck I, stuck in her mermaid bottoms. Dude, <laughs> yeah, that way you just got the line. So that way there's nothing explicit. Yeah. There we go. There we go. 
Well, I just need to capture this. Back to navigating. Well, we made it back to home, finally. And I'm sure our neighbors are very displeased with the arrival of the Barely Cuda. Which, you can thank Dad for that name. <laughs> I'm going to help him here in a minute get these on. But these are Jezebel's super tricks. I plan on running on her, but these got regular bias fly tires, so I don't mind if they sit on their flat. And uh, Dad and I bought these 15 by 14 center lines from a, our buddy Cody, who supplies with a bunch of van parts. Both of came off Sox and Martin's, one of their cars. Eh, it's a cool story. I don't know if you can really prove it, but uh, yeah. They're going on here, because why not? It'll look cool, and they're going to stick out really horrendously with that freaking seven and a quarter rear end. But you know what? We got to complete the look and make this thing look like a race car. Plus, thank you, dude, for those, but uh, they rub really bad. And I don't really plan on falling in love with this car, but I also don't want to tear it up. Still not yet. The end out, eh? No, no, I got some. They're endless. Okay, I'm going to help Dad. We'll be back. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Regaining the title of King of the Sister Kissers. If that's a good thing, I don't know. But I like it. Sorry, Brian. I might be stealing your thunder just a little bit. Alright, we're going to get her off the trailer. Put the doors on it. Put the trunk lid on it. Really take a deep dive in the old barely Cuda. And uh, show you some more. I just want the whole world to know that I have the absolute greatest dad in the whole wide world. Because instead of going to our family breakfast on this Sunday or working on his Alice Chalmers 190XT that we got running yesterday and anything else we could have done, we were going to paint the hood, get it all prettied up, now it's running, put the front end back under it so Dad could maybe drive it and enjoy his tractor that we got fixed, that Dad got kind of screwed on. But instead, we made a, we'll call it a seven hour round trip to Omaha, Nebraska to pick up this. Oh, yes. So. There it is, as Dad has titled it, the Barley Cuda. And uh, yeah, our 15 by 14s, perfect, perfect fit. They stick out just a little bit, but you know, all that's original. This car, I, I, it's hard to figure out what's going on. I messaged the guy who had it originally listed for sale. He has no history on it, so. Anybody in the Nebraska area you know anything about this kind of car, let me know. The cage, is, the cage ought to identify this car pretty easily if anybody knows anything about it. It's pretty wild how they built it. And instead of putting wheel tubs in it, they put a wheel tub in it. Look at that. It's one big tub. That's what I'm talking about. Maximum tire clearance. Your only limitation is the frame rail, which... That's easily solved by a torch, which whoever built this car clearly, truly believed in lightweight. Because uh, there is nothing going on in here. Can't even put a passenger seat in because that roll bar goes right in, right where the seat would be. But uh, it's a 68 Fastback Barracuda car I've always wanted. There's V8 emblem right there. I put my Super Tricks on the front because they had tires that would hold air for more than four seconds. And those center lines will probably stay on here. Because, yeah, those things look wicked. This thing looks like a freaking funny car. I could hook some really nice photos of this thing. And I had to put it right next to Jezebel because blue is far from my favorite color. My favorite color is red. But my whole life has been plagued by blue cars. All of my favorite cars have been blue. And I really could care less about the color blue. But there's a lot of unique stuff going on here. I'm trying to figure out why they covered all this up. This thing's a drag car. It's got the little Plymouth sticker up there. i got to clean the windshield. But it's got glass there, glass here, bucks of glass here, Lexan. But this is 1986. Oh, God, I was reading that earlier. Official contestant NHRA Winston World Championship Series. And then we got an old centerline Firestone decal, which works out perfectly because there's center lines back on it. But, you know, no dash. This is just a race car. There's nothing you can do to fix this thing legally, and I'm not going to try and fix it legally. Power steering gearbox will be gone. Got a manual box for that. 
We're gonna brace up the front end because this needs to be braced up some more, obviously. Uh, she's uh, pretty gutted, to say the least. You're gonna need to find a hood, just something. But it's all set up for pins and everything. We're gonna have to figure out how to relocate these doors because literally, uh, Jay and uh, Jason from Rabbit Transit Garage, they sent me these magnets, I think it's a joke, and they actually work as great door stops to hold the door open, because it's metal, and now they're all that's holding this door on, and then the bungee cord holding that door on, and I don't think that's gonna work as a permanent fix. But yeah. But there's that wheel tub. <coughs> we got a steering column out of a later car. I got a 65 B-body column I could put in here. At least it'll be smooth and everything. But long wheel studs in the front. I'm guessing this car had either an eight and three quarter or a Dana 60. Looking at the way it's built, I guess it probably was a Dana 60. Or it might have been an eight and three quarter, but now it's got a seven and a quarter, which actually is a rear end I've always wanted to play with. It is the tiniest thing. I think that covers about the size of the palm of your hand. But uh that'll probably end up going, but we might see how much it'll take. As far as engine for this thing, I don't know. Oh, that would have been another NHRA sticker, and that's another center or uh, center line. Fix that or replace that, or leave it. Maybe figure out a way to put. Eh, I'll probably just leave that open. Knock all the core plugs out of it so that way the water can drain. I'll probably be spending tomorrow or whenever it's not raining grinding this whole floor, cleaning it, pour 15ing it, making it sanitary looking. How do you get in? Uh, that's a really good question. I'm a fat guy. Like I said, the last thing I knew was a freaking race car. But look what we bought, Dad. Oh, I bought. And as far as engines, I know we're going to get a lot of Pro Stock Cami things. This car is a $1,000 throwaway to me. Literally. It's the worst, best $1,000 I think I ever spent. Literally, it's got more money and wheels and tires on it than the car cost. That's your typical deal. It looks so cool. I think this thing, I thought originally about maybe putting the Pro Stock in it, but the Pro Stock is just pretty wild. Almost thinking Dad's Motorhome 440 out back that runs like a champ. I got a tunnel ram, I got a set of wedge fender well headers in the shop. And just building this thing with all the scrap extras we've got over the years and trying to not spend any more money on this thing. It's kind of the idea. It's got a spool type K member, which is actually really cool. Disc brakes already on it. You got two by three tubing. Oh, the old school frame connectors? Yeah. Yeah, so the guys at Battery Productions, they did a whole video on how to do those. That's the old school way where they slice open the rear frame rail, lay a piece of tube, they cut the floor open, and they didn't fully weld it, which will need to be addressed. And that runs all the way up to the front frame stub on the torsion bar cross member. And actually the torsion bar cross member and everything underneath this car has been re-gusseted and strengthened. And there's that little hole I told you about. It must have passed inspection at one time. Yeah. If it was a contestant. That's true. The switches go. Oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty neat. But you know, the future will tell what happens to this thing, how far it goes, <coughs> what we end up doing with it, but Rest assured, it's probably going to be pretty freaking radical and pretty wild because it's a cartoony car. Brian at Dust Devil Garage and his knuckle duster kind of re-inspired me to build something just stupid. And I'm not saying Brian's car is stupid, but this Barracuda is very stupid. It's very ignorant. And I got to re-earn my title for, you know, the sister kisser since the yard dart started that term. And, well, Jezebel's 15 by 10s are sucked in now with the narrowed rear end, so we had to fix that with a car that couldn't have them sucked in so thanks again cody for those thank you eric for the car and thank you dad for road tripping and hauling the trailer and driving so basically i didn't even know we were going to Omaha. we could have went to the zoo but we're hoping to make it back in time to actually work on the tractor but it was like 80 degrees in nebraska it's beautiful we got back home and it's 95 yeah but there is the Barely Cuda. Barely Cuda. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you look forward to seeing more on this thing in the near future. As always, look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. So as always, take care and bye. Bye-bye.